Welcome back, everybody, to the New York Mets franchise here in season number two. About five games in, solid start so far, four and one through the first five games. Have a tough series against the Philadelphia Phillies coming up. We'll get into scouting as well. We're also going to get into the debut of one of our top draft picks, Derek Yeager. So we'll get into that as well. But you can see, final game here against the Cubs. Hopefully we can get that, take that series there, and then three games against the Phillies. So, I mean, that's the division winner from last year. Um, a team we're going to have to compete for this year, no doubt about it. They started off 3-1 and one so far this season. Let's sim through this game here against the Cubs and then keep going forward. But you can see AAA has started, but AA right there on the 5th is going to be his debut start. So that is the game we're going to get into, I believe, first. We're going to get into that game. Now, he is only a C potential, but he has a 70 overall, 18 years old. And, man, he has got some heat. There was about 97 to 99, five pitches. Let's get into this game here with Derek Yeager and see what he's got. He's got a 97 mile an hour cutter. I mean, that is a nasty pitch. Man, if his cutter is like Mariano Rivera-esque, that would be uh, unreal. As this one's hit into left, that's going to be a fly out there to left field. Now, this double-A lineup this year, I'm not expecting a whole lot, but there are pitchers down here for sure, especially this guy right here. Now... 18 years old, so you want to go slow, no doubt about it. You know, coming pretty much right out of high school, not getting any college ball in there. But he is a 70 overall. That gives me, you know, a little hope for sure that he could accelerate through the system as he will draw a walk there. So, man on there with one away. Kind of like Charlie Soto, who he acquired in the trade, and he dominated last year. And double A is we're going to throw that one away. It actually hits off the first base coach. We're going to get a luck. We're going to luck out here. Wow. <laughs> Hits the first base coach shin. Bounces off perfectly. And gets uh, cut down there at second base. As this one's hit well on the left. And it's going to be playable, though. As these minor league stadiums have said before. Absolutely just ginormous. But, yeah, I, I mean, he could accelerate. We'll see. Charlie Soto just dominated double A. He is pitching very well in AAA. It's just so tough when a guy's 18, 19 years old. You don't want to rush him. You don't want to bring him up you know, right away, especially, I would say, a pitcher. It's one thing to bring up a guy like the Orioles have done in real life, top prospect Jackson Holiday. That is one thing. He is struggling, though, here so far early on. I mean, it's only been like three or four games, but you can see him struggling just a bit. It's one thing for me as a position player, but another as a pitcher. I think I'd rather just wait on that. And, uh, but if you're dominating, you're dominating. I mean, you definitely get the call. So I'm hoping Jaeger is going to have a, uh, you know, very good season. He got some really good stuff, as you can see, 98 right there. 0-2 pitch. First two on in this inning. Ground ball is going to be foul. I would think, obviously, with the stuff he has, more of a kind of a strikeout pitcher. Another 0-2. Cutter jammed on the hands. But that is going to be just foul. I thought that was going to sneak in there. 2-2 two, two, will take the slider away and works it to a 3-2 three, count. 3-2. Three, hit to center. And this one's going to get down for a base hit. So a run is going to score. Yeah, he'll be in there. So let up a run here. Struggling right now in his professional debut. So... Hopefully it's not a bad one. Just a bad start here, bad inning. But get a ground ball there over to first base. There's one away here in the second inning. Runners move up to second and third. If we can just limit this damage here. They get one more out of this. That's not that bad. But he's got the stuff to get some Ks. So he can strike out, guys. 0-1. That's a nice curve ball. Kind of buckle his knees there a little bit. Maybe go back to the heat. 0-2. And he won't chase after it. A little bit high there at 97. Calling for the fastball again. But we're going to go cutter inside. And they're going to say he went there for strike three. Now, for gameplay wise, see, I do sometimes listen to the catcher. And a lot of the times that's for breaking pitches, like a curveball or a slider. And that's just being on the same page. I have found that. Those are the times you're going to get more wild pitches, obviously, if you've, you know, new to this game or never played it, and you have the, uh, you know, catcher help in there. You might want to, you know, I still call my own pitches a lot of times. A lot of times we do, uh, you know, kind of sync up. But I tell you what, it, oh, that cutter's nasty. Cutter is nasty. See you later, strike three. 
But on those breaking pitches like this right here, if you're not in sync with your catcher sometimes, those were, you know, where your, you know, pass balls get away from you, and especially if a guy on third, got to be a little careful with that. As the cutter, kind of right over the middle of the plate, but when it has that much movement and speed, it's tough. 0-2, oh, swing and a miss, strike three. That cutter might be the pitch. Yeah, that might be the out pitch. I mean, throwing that cutter at 97, it's ridiculous. And then you're thinking, oh, man, it's going to cut a little bit. Nope, it's just straight heat, 97 to 99, as this was 97 right there. So 1-2 pitch. Let's see if we can get another K here. Not going to get a K, but we're going to ground out there to first base. So we're out number two here in this fourth inning. Looking a little bit better. Control's a little bit better. Just have to get into a bit of a rhythm. This one's going to be hitting the left, and it is going to be playable and caught. And there you go. One, two, three, fourth inning for Jaeger. Looking good. I like the stuff that I'm seeing. He'll just have to continue to work on his breaking pitches. You know, like any young pitcher, usually that fastball you're, you know, solid at. Cutter's kind of the same thing. It's more of those breaking pitches, off-speed pitches. Maybe work on a changeup. Because if you have a cutter like that and then you throw a, you know, nasty changeup, you're almost going to be unhittable, especially if you locate as that ends ripped up the middle for a base hit. I mean, that's the other thing with young pitchers, just location, location, location. If you're throwing that cutter at 97 and you can locate it just about every time like i said mariano rivera i mean he made a career off of one pitch and that's a 5-4-3 double play to get out of the fifth yeah he made his whole career on that pitch it was just pretty much almost unhittable you know it's coming and you can do nothing about it i mean just because the location is just absolutely perfect 0-2 as we're working in the sixth inning now. And strike three there on the slider right there. Perfectly placed. Hitter doesn't like it, but too bad. Goes to down. So after that second inning, it's been a lot better. He's only at 66 pitches as well. So the pitch count's solid. I'm not sure how long they're going to, uh, you know, keep him in here. Obviously not our choice in a player lock game. Ground ball over to second base, over to first. Got it there for out number two. So, yeah, he has just been firing on all cylinders right now. So, two away here in this sixth inning. He'll take the curveball down low. See Ruben Fox, number six, first base bit prospect. Number four in this Toronto team. And this one into right. Will it get down? Nope, second baseman is out there. He has got it. So, we are through six innings. See if they let us go to seven here. Getting the check out, making sure nothing, uh, no foreign substance on the hand. And yeah. Oh, Leon Pena, another draft pick. He had a three run home run. So we got a six to one lead. So we're in the seventh. See if we can get through seven here as we're getting squeezed a little bit there. That should have been a strike. 1 0 here to Robertson. And Robertson ground over to first base. Easy play. Got it there. Out number one. Man, if we can get through seven. After that second inning was just not looking good. You know, young pitchers, that can be a time where it just goes away from you, falls apart. Hopefully we can get through seven here. That's going to be a base hit. And I'll tell you what, that is the first base runner in a while that he has allowed. So cannot complain with this debut here so far. I mean, to me, his stuff's just going to get better and better. And with the C potential, that hurts a little bit, obviously. But, man, if he continues to improve, I mean, that's going to go up to a B. And this guy has a real chance of, you know, not obviously depending how he pitches. But if he pitches well, I don't think next year he has a chance to make the major league roster. But the year after that, probably for sure, as that's going to be a walk. So a little bit of troubles here in this seventh inning. They're going to try to let him work out of it. I like that, too. You know, especially down in the minor leagues, I know as a coach, you're trying to still win your games. You're trying to keep your job. But a lot of the times, it's just to try to, you know, make those guys get up to the big leagues. And that's a nice pitch there for strike three. But I like letting these young guys down here in the minors, let them work through some things. You know, you don't want them to get them completely shelled, but still. See what he can do with this jam. 0-1. That was a nice curveball there. Fastball a little bit high. See, down to 95 now. He's starting to run out of gas. Curveball's going to foul that one away. So this will be, what, pitch number 88? 1-2. And that one is fouled away. Cutter left up a little bit. See if we can get him here. Slider away. Uh, inside. 
Hit into center field, and it's going to be caught. So gets away with that one. Completely missed the location, but does not matter. Get the out through seven. I think that will be it for him, and it will. But hey, great start. Cannot complain. We see that he has some just great stuff. That cutter is absolutely nasty. And he comes out here with a professional debut victory. So cannot complain about that. So, and Leon Pena with the three-run home run. He went one for three. Uh, so that is the thing. With our draft, we we missed out on three guys. It was probably the worst signing period I've ever had in this game. So these draft picks that we did end up signing, they're going to have to produce. So good to see at least two of them right there in the debuts. Looking good as this series is not looking good against Philadelphia. We lose 10-3. to Walker Bueller gets absolutely shelled. Matt Stram, uh, Stram comes in. I mean, he just got annihilated as well. We lose the first game against Philadelphia. And uh, hopefully we don't get swept here. But we're going to get into scouting. All right. Start the weeks of scouting here. We'll have, I believe, the ninth pick in the draft in our first round. But I think last year, I think scouting, just trying to get back into it was not... I don't think I scouted very well. Um, just the whole draft process was not good. Um, you know, it just wasn't the greatest. We kind of screwed it up. The whole signing, not really paying attention, I would say, to the, you know, percentage of interest, I think kind of screwed screwed us over. So, I, you know, this time, this, this is going to be a better year for sure. And I don't want to miss out, especially when you have pick nine. I think sometimes when you get it later in the first round, you kind of just get a little lackadaisical about it, um, knowing that you're not going to have like a top 10, top 15 pick. And maybe that's what happened. This year we have a top 10 pick, and we can't miss. We're going to have to find a absolute all-star to make out up for what happened last year. That is for sure. So look at Dobbins, Pena. Um, you know Ronnie Matson. So he's better discovery. So I think we'll keep him there the entire time. Right now, Boozy Pitcher, International. We'll kind of switch that up to get more prospects as we lose the final game to Philadelphia. So we just got absolutely swept there. Lose 9-2. to two. Last two games were not even close. Adrian Hauser, three innings, nine hits, five earned. Brooks Raley comes in, just gets shelled as well. So not what you want to see. ERA is very elevated, obviously, beginning of the season. But three-game sweep, and now we go into Pittsburgh. We got Ben Brown on the mound. Let's get into his second start. He did not have a very good first start, so let's go to Pittsburgh. Try to end this three-game losing streak. Get back on the right track and see if Ben Brown can have a better second start here after his abysmal uh, major league debut, and just it just was not good. So Pirates right now at six and four. You got Mitch Keller on the mound for him. One and one so far on the season with a 2.57 ERA. He can throw some heat. He's got some really good stuff. Whip under one. So he's going to be a tough matchup for sure. But, so let's get into this game here. Here comes Francisco Lindor to the plate. Ground ball up the middle. Uh, over to first base and got him. If the camera angle looked a little different, I'm kind of still messing around with him, some camera angles just due to the fact that, you know, you're trying to find your rhythm or something you're, you can hit at because this game can be frustrating at times. There's no doubt about it. And obviously... You know, we're not doing pinpoint, you know, we're not doing the PCI. We're not doing any of that. We're playing more ratings based here in franchise for sure. And, you know, you get solid contact and you think it's, you know, going to, something's going to happen. It's just like kind of a weak ground ball. It's kind of frustrating. It's Glaber Torres is going to rip that one up the middle for a base hit. So just trying to get that, uh, messing around with some camera angles to try to get the timing down. Cause everybody's different. Some camera works out for some, some, you know, it doesn't work out. So it's, it's all, you know, sometimes people have problems with low pitches, high pitches, you know, need something more where the timing is going to be a little bit more sped up. So, you know, you just kind of mess around and try to find the right one for yourself. You know, if you get frustrated at this game hitting wise, trust me, don't be one of those people. If you're, you're hitting right now, say you're on a, you know, the difficulty, just turn it down to all-star or something. Don't get too frustrated at it. Just try to get to the rhythm. Like I said, this game sometimes is baseball very well. It can be very frustrating. You just got to stick with it and keep going as that's going to be flying out there for McNeil. So nothing for us in the first as Ben Brown only went three and two-thirds innings last time. It was not a good start. Um, let's try to make it through four. G1 Bay is going to lead this off here for Pittsburgh. 
Don't want to get him on base. He's got some speed, but works it to a 3-2 count. McCutcheon is on deck. And a good start to the season. 3-2 fouls that one away. So this is the other thing, you know. I think last time as well. Struggling just putting guys away. And that's going to be ball four. So g on base, Speedster gets on base. Lead off walk to start off this game. As here comes McCutcheon. And McCutcheon down the line. That's going to be a fair ball. Bay's going to be on his way to third base. McCutcheon will stop at first, and it's going to be first and third to start off this game. So we're going to need a double play ball. If, if Bay scores, no big deal, but we got to at least get a double play. But this is a tough guy to double up. Luis Arise, just an absolute professional hitter, 429 average. I mean, he's not going to you know, hit home runs, but he just gets base hit after base hit. He'll take the fastball inside. So it works it to a 1-1 count here. And he'll take that curveball down low. So not messing around. I mean, it's this is one of the I would say this is one of the tougher guys to pitch in baseball. 2-1. Curveball's gonna get into the zone. So 2-2. Two, two. Can we get a big strikeout here? And Luis Arise does what Luis Arise does. Just flips one in there to left field. Works out perfectly. Base hit. And the Pirates get on the board here. First. One nothing, but we still have nobody out as Jack Sawinski's going to rip one up the middle. McCutcheon on his way to the plate. He'll score. Two nothing. Nobody out here in this first inning. And it uh, looks like Ben Brown's second start is not looking too, too well at all. Not looking good. We get an out. We're already at 26 pitches. We have nobody out. Looks like we'll finally get it out here as Andy Rodriguez is going to fly out to right. Tagging up, going to third base. Throw's going to be a little offline, but at least we finally get it out here. But still, first and third with only one away. Leo Piguero is going to come to the plate up the middle, and that's going to be, could be a double play, and it is. Glaber Torres gets it, flips it, and double play, but still two score in the first. Let's hopefully Ben Brown settles down a little bit. As Brooks Lee comes to the plate, bat 382 early on here in the season. Good to see. Hopefully has a fantastic season this year. Our big trade ship from that Pete Alonzo deal. Pitch from Keller. As he gets a hold of this one deep in the right field, it keeps carrying, but it's going to be caught at the wall. Just not enough there. As McCutcheon runs it down, you can see the frustration there. Thinking you have it, but just not enough. All right, let's head to the bottom half of the second. Prado to the plate. Swing and a miss there. Strike three on the fastball. Was he out in front of that one? I think he was out in front of that 99. Crazy. As Max going to fly this one to the left. Nimmo underneath of it. All right, one, two, three, second. So nice comeback inning for Ben Brown. Like that one. Brett Beatty coming to the plate here to start off this third inning. A little bit of a slow start. Couldn't carry over from spring. As Beatty gets underneath this one, good contact, carrying back a little bit, but McCutcheon is there. It doesn't even get to the track, so just a fly out there for Beatty. As Ronnie Mauricio coming to the plate. Another youngster, hopefully get more playing time and see if he excels as he'll take the pitch inside for a strike. 1-2 pitch. Oh, this one's hit well. This one is going to be absolutely roped into the gap. And Mauricio's going to be on his way to second base for a double. He's going to try for three. Here comes the throw, and he's gone down at third. Maybe not the best decision, but the relay was perfect. And, dude, slide, sliding in this game sometimes, not good. Decision-making, it's just not good. Now, probably should have stayed at second with Lindor coming up, but... Trying to get aggressive, I guess. 1-0 to Lindor. Base hit, of course. That's just how it works, right? If you would have stayed on, just a double. That single knocks in the run. It's 2-1, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. But a single here with two away in the third. And here comes Glaber Torres to the plate. As he is going to get this one, and that's going to be caught there by McCutcheon and Wright. So, we get nothing out of it. Go to the bottom half of the third. And that is a great pitch there for strike three. 
Jiwon Bay a little bit confused. Did not see that curveball coming. Now two away and a 3-1 count to Luisa Rise. And guess what? If Nimmo, yep, Nimmo's not going to get... This dude, I tell you what. Where do you pitch him? You pitch him inside, he just inside outs it. You pitch him outside, he'll just poke into the left. It doesn't matter where you throw it to this guy. As Sawinski gets hit there... But he swung, so it's a strike. And then he's just going to come back and rip a base hit up the middle. Second hit for Sawinski. So now a little bit of trouble here in this third inning. But, man, yeah, Luis Arise is ridiculous. I mean, that's why the guy was, you know, last year almost hitting 400. Crazy. So Andy Rodriguez to the plate. Flew out to right last time. Try to get him here. 3-2 count. That is not the pitch at all. Not even close. Ball four. Bases loaded now. Everybody's reached with two away. Piguero coming to the plate. 0-2. He'll take that fastball. Just got to get it down a little bit. 1-2. That one hit into right, but McNeil is there, and he's got it for out number three. So a little bit of trouble in that third, but Ben Brown works out of it. Still just a 2-0 game. Can the offense get something rolling? Is Jeff McNeil, that's what we want to see. Rips this one to the gap. That should be a one-out double here in this fourth inning. Not obviously trying for third with McNeil. He can stay there at second base. All right. All right. Can we get something on the board here? Try to help out our young pitcher. Try to get some run support for him. As Brooks Lee to the plate. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to project like Brooks Lee home run wise. Maybe 20, 20 to 25. I don't think he's going to hit 30. I don't think so. As Lee gets hold of this one, and this one's going to be trouble. It's going to get down to the gap. McNeil's going to score. Lee on his way to second base. Back-to-back -back doubles. We'll get on the board here, get this back to a 2-1 to ball game. Nice job, Brooks Lee. He's already playing fantastic defense. Now the bat's there. He is going to be a complete player. There's no doubt about it. It's working out as Bader up the middle. Should be an easy play there for out number three. But, hey, at least we get one back. That's fine. Get some offense rolling a little bit. It's been very slow here so far. Now it's up to Ben Brown to just keep this at a 2-1 game. As Harris is going to take that inside. 2-2 two -two pitch. And swing and a miss. Strike three on the fastball. 98 on the top half inside. That one is going to be tough to hit. As Joe Mack major, making his major league debut here. Takes the pitch outside. So we got a couple of youngsters here facing off against each other. 1-1, one, one, and ripped into left, Nimmo over, and he's got it there for out number three. So Ben Brown gets through four. Hey, it's better than last time, right? Hopefully give us five or six. Is Ronnie Mauricio, man, he is ripping the ball so far in this game. He has the double, rips that single. 110 off the bat. I mean, that is just absolutely annihilated. As this will bring Lindor now to the plate, Lindor... One for two with that base hit. Well, Lindor gets a hold of this one. I think Mauricio is going to be on his way to third base. He will there. Lindor thought about it. Goes back to first. So first and third. One away now here in this fifth inning. Can Glaber Torres come through with a big hit? Give us maybe the lead or at least tie this one up. And that's off to the end of the bat. And we'll absolutely take it. Gets down for a hit. Hey, Luis Arise had two of those. We deserve one as well. We get one with Glaber Torres. Run comes in, tied up at two apiece, and hopefully still not done yet with Brandon Nimmo coming to the plate. As Nimmo will take the fastball inside. 2-1 here to Brandon Nimmo. Maybe the best hitter on the team. And he doesn't miss! Absolutely crushed. Cutter left over the middle of the plate, and Brandon Nimmo, see you later. Three-run shot. And we're going to take the lead in this game for the first time, 5-2. to two. His third home run of the season, all-star last year. I mean, the way he's going on this year, I would say probably another all-star appearance is ready for Brandon Nimmo. But a 5-2 to two lead, and now let's head to the fifth. So can Brent Brown at least get through five? Because right now it's 78 pitches. It's going to be interesting, but that's a pop-up. Alvarez underneath of it should have it there for out number one. If we get through five, at least qualify for the win. That would be great. 2-2 two, two, as this one's hit well. McCutcheon, but Nimmo back. Nimmo's got it there for out number two. 
So two quick outs here in this fifth inning. And here comes Luis Arise, a guy we just can't seem to get out. Man, that's a really good take. That pitch is right there. 1-0. Another good take. I mean, he's not missing by much. These are right there. Could be called strikes, really. And this will foul away this pitch. So 2-1. Man, that is just rough. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? 3-1, and Luisa Arise will draw a walk. We just can't get this guy out. So right now at 91 pitches, if Sawinski gets a hit here, that might be it. This might be his last batter. And he hits Sawinski, of course. 0-2 pitch, and he hits him. Oh, I just want to get through five. We might be stretching him out to here too far. As Andy Rodriguez is going to have a base hit. Arise is going to score. It's a five to three game, and that's it. That will do it for Ben Brown. He only goes four and two thirds. He cannot get through five innings. We got to go to the bullpen. As Caleb Thielbar is going to come into this ball game to try to make sure they don't go any more than five to three. But that is. That's, oh man, that's a base hit as well. So it won't end the uh, game yet for Ben Brown. So that's another run to him. And then the man on second base is accounted for as a run as well. So uh, if we can't, if, if Andy Rodriguez scores here, it'll be five earned run and four and two thirds. But hopefully Thielbar can get this final out here. Yes. Oh, come on. Come on. Give us that call there. As Dustin Harris pitched to him. And Harris absolutely blasts this one. And the Pirates have retaken the lead with two outs here in the fifth inning. Two quick outs. And all of a sudden, the, their offense just absolutely picks up. That will officially end the day on Ben Brown. And I don't know if he'll be on the hook for the loss, but man, 7-5. I'm not sure about how anybody else is playing out there. Let me know if you're playing this game. Uh, have you seen a tick up in the offense? I know I said way back, if you will, you know, first couple episodes that I played in season number one, I felt the pitching was a tad bit too easy. And we were just shutting down teams left and right with pitchers that really shouldn't be shutting down anybody. But as, the, as of late, I mean, it is just... The offense has been going nuts. I mean, really, you know, I think the offense for the, you know, human, you know, team is still the same. As Bader leads off there with a base hit. But I'll tell you what, the CPU, I know this is on legend difficulty pitching, but they have just been killing the ball. Speaking of, Brett Beatty almost out of here. I mean, out of the entire park. But this is a two-run shot, and we're tied up at seven apiece. He didn't miss that one. Left up a hanging breaking ball and a first of the season for, for our Brett Beatty. Absolutely ripped. 109 exit velo. Like I said, just about got out of the whole entire yard. So seven apiece here in the sixth. So we got like a, you know, Jets. Steeler game here, seven apiece. You know, 7-7 seven, seven tie. Which... Hey, the way the Jets play offense, same thing with Pittsburgh. I mean, NFL-wise, I mean, that's definitely realistic going into maybe like the third quarter. As Luis arrives, guess what? Another base hit for him. Nothing surprising there. Just just a base hit machine, three for three with a walk. He's reached every time. So is this guy, Jack Sawinski. Couple of base hits, hit by pitch. One, two. And what was that? Are you telling me Lindor can't get that? All right. Well, Luis Arise and Jack Swinski are dead perfect in this game. Now, Paul Seawald is going to have to come into this game to try to shut it down. I think it just said Andy Rodriguez is batting 400 so far this season with runners in scoring position. 1-2. Well, that average is going to go down. Rodriguez looking on the strikeout. Maybe we can get a double play ball here. That would be fantastic as that one is ripped foul. Watch out, third base coach. For a pop-up, we'll take it. McNeil over. Should have it easily. There we go, out number two. 
Tell you what, I like Paul Seawald. He just comes in, does what he's got to do, gets the outs, limits damage, and right now trying to limit big-time damage and possibly taking the lead, Pittsburgh. You got first and second with nobody out. Here comes Dustin Harris. Hit that home run earlier. He's got to foul away that slurve. So 0-2. Going inside with a fastball, and might have to be careful with that because that was absolutely ripped. We'll go low and away this time. And it works out perfectly. Sinker gets him looking for strike three. So the Pirates get the first two on. Nothing happening of it. Let's go to the eighth. They got a crazy game here. As Bader ground ball over to first base, and oh, the throw pulls him off. So Bader will be on. Should have been an out there. So now get a you know kind of a speedster on first base instead of two away it's just one here comes brett Beatty to the plate and Beatty rips this one this one hit to the gap could it get out of here off the wall Bader should score easily and there is your lead as the youngster brett Beatty coming through with a big two run homer and a big rbi double here in the eighth inning to give us the lead eight to seven he is not missing those breaking ball pitches great to see can we add another run? We'll love to see it. It's Ronnie Mauricio coming to the plate. Mauricio, that's not going to get through. Oh, misplayed at first. Could be trouble, and he's going to be oh, just out there at first base. Close. All right, Francisco Lindor. Give us something here. Give us another base hit. Two for four so far in this game. We'll love a base hit here to knock in another run. And Lindor might just do it. And we're even more. That's going to be off the wall. Lindor comes through with a two out. RBI double here in the eighth inning to add another run. Nine to seven. Got a heck of a ball game here in Pittsburgh. That's for sure. As Torres two for four so far in this game. Love to see three for five. As hits well, but it's going to be right at the center fielder. And that will be out number three. But hey. There we go. Take the lead. 9-7. to seven. We'll leave Paul Seawalt into the game as Bader over, and he's not going to be able to get it. This is trouble. That could be a triple. Prado on his way. No, he's going to stop there at second base, but a leadoff double here in this eighth inning. So we might have to get Diaz up and ready, possibly. But hopefully Seawalt, this is why I said I like him because he can get out of these jams. Pitch to Mack. Pops him up. Easy play for Brooks Lee there at third base. All right, out number one here in this eighth inning. Top of the order coming up. G1 Bay coming up late. Let's just not get to Luis Arise. Let's just not get to him. Because if there's like two on and Arise comes up, I mean, I'm probably going to think about walking him. But G1 Bay is going to go down. Strike three, two away down this eighth inning. Big K as here comes Andrew McCutcheon to the plate. A veteran trying to come through here for Pittsburgh in the eighth inning. 0-1 here to McCutcheon. And he'll take the pitch down low for a ball. That was a nice pitch, though. Good take. And we're going to fastball inside. Fouls away that fastball. Maybe just a tad bit late on that fastball. But now we're going to go slurve away. Pitch. And swing and a miss. Strike three. Probably would have been a called strike three anyway. Down goes McCutcheon. Seedwald leadoff double goes nowhere. And we go to the ninth. As McNeil hits this one well, and it's McCutcheon over. Caught it, man. Perfect time and perfect everything. You're thinking that's going to be a gapper for sure, but McCutcheon runs it down. So Brooks Lee trying to continue this ninth inning. And hey, we'll, t hey, we'll take the call. We'll take that. 1 0 pitch now. And Lee up the middle. Should be an easy play. Over to first. Out number three. So nothing there for us in the ninth. So Edwin Diaz will come into the game looking for save number four of the season. We've got a 9-2 to two lead. Yeah, so far four innings pitched. No ERA. Nothing allowed so far. So here we go. 1-2 pitch to Elise Luis Arise, who we have yet to get out in this game. He's perfect. 3-for-3 three three with a walk. 2-2. Two, two. And finally, we have finally gotten him out here. Fly out to center field for out number one here in this ninth inning. It's about time. And same thing with Jack Sawinski. Another guy just haven't been able to get out here. He'll take the strike inside. Strike there for, take a strike. Oh, one. 
And we still haven't got Jack Swinski out. Down the line, could be extra bases. McNeil up with it. Nope, he'll stay there at first base. So the tying run will come to the plate. And Swinski ripped that at 100. Exit Velo. No real chance there at first base for Brett Beatty. All right, 3-2 count now to Andy Rodriguez. The pitch. And strike three inside on the heat. Two away here in this ninth inning. Leover Piguero will be up the final chance here for Pittsburgh here in this ninth inning. And he'll take the pitch down low for a ball. 1-0. And he'll foul that one away. Gets jammed up a little bit. Let's go fastball in. Gets jammed there again. So do you go back to the fastball? Maybe go away, low and away with the slider. We'll try that. 1-2, low and away. Oh! Thought that was strike three in ball game. He'll take that slider. So now, 3-2. That's going to allow Sawinski to get going with the pitch here. And the not even close ball four that puts the tying run on. Now the go-ahead run at the plate. Dustin Harris, who had a three-run homer earlier. His first of his career. So you know he has the power. 2-0 pitch and takes that pitch for a ball. So 3-0. We want run ourselves into trouble here in the ninth. There we go. 24th pitch coming up for Diaz. Man, the pitch not, not looking good as that's going to be ball four. So the bases are loaded here in the ninth inning. The Pirates have been a two-out rally team in this game. Yeah, the ratio is awful. 13 balls, the 11 strikes. 25th pitch coming up here to Prado. One for four so far in this game and just cannot find the zone. Ugh. Pitch, swing and a miss there on that fastball inside. Got away with that one. Should have been ball two. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouls away that fastball. All right, one away here. Just try to put him away here. 1-2. And strike three, but the ball gets away from Alvarez. He's going to have to make the throw to first, and he's safe. Unbelievable. A strikeout to end the game. But it's a wild pitch. Run scores. It's 9-8. to eight, And that's going to be a base hit from Mack. Here comes the runner. The play at the plate is not in time. And the Pirates have won. What just happened? Wow. Absolutely devastating end to this game. We get a strikeout. The ball gets away from Alvarez. Cannot make the play at first base. And then just like that, next pitch. Little bloop over third base. And the Pirates win. Ben Brown, four and two thirds, six hits, five earned, three walks. And I know it's only two starts, but I think I have seen enough. Just not ready yet. He is going to be sent down to Triple A. Um, to work on some things. I just haven't seen enough there. Sean Manai is going to be brought back up. Uh, yeah. Just not seeing it. Right now he is struggling a lot. That is a devastating loss. That loss was awful. But I think we're going to end this here. Like I said, we're going to move a lot, a lot quicker here the next couple videos. Don't worry about that. So, But still. That'll do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support. I do appreciate it. Hit that like button. Subscribe for more. I will see you in the next one. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.